Hey everybody, Mike here with everythingaboutconcrete.com. In this video, I'm going to show you how we pour and finish a concrete pool deck. And this one, this pool just happens to be a kidney shaped pool, so you'll get to see how we pour around a pool that has a bunch of curves. Now this is part two of, the, of a two part series. Part one, I showed you how we form this concrete pool deck and get, get all the prep work done. And I'll have that pop up right up here at the top of the screen if you want to go check that out. If not, then I'll have it pop up at the end of the video, so you can check it out at the end of the video. So what we're doing here is we're wheelbarrowing this. We couldn't quite reach it with a concrete truck very good, but we could reach one side of it. So I decided it's about 12 yards, so I decided just to wheelbarrow it instead of pump it. If I couldn't have got the concrete truck that close, then we probably would have gone ahead and just pumped this. But since we could back the truck down one side, get the chutes inside the job job site here, we just decided to wheel it and that saved the homeowner about $850. Now when we start a pool deck like this, we, we don't just start in any random area. We try to pick a point where it's also going to be easiest to start finishing the pool. And on this one, we tried to pick the, one of the narrower points, see it's four feet wide over there where we started. So not only is it an easy place to start pouring, but it's also going to be an easy place to start finishing the deck once we uh, once the concrete starts setting up on us. So what I'm doing is I'm magging the edges, I'm screeding the concrete, I just screeded that little bay with Abby, and I'm doing the bull floating while Luke and Darren are doing the heavy work, getting the concrete where we need it uh, Tia and Abby they're uh, puddling the concrete they're pulling up the wire as we go we didn't put anything under the wire because we got a wheelbarrow over it so they're just kind of pulling it up as we go and the concrete mix itself is a it's a 4,000 psi mix but it has fiber mesh in it too so it has reinforcement in the concrete so uh, it's got the wire mesh which we're pulling up the best we can and then it also has the fiber mesh. Now for you guys that are new here, if this is your first time watching me, my name's Mike Day. I specialize in all types of concrete flat work. That's what my channel is about here. So if you like that kind of stuff, go ahead down there and hit subscribe. I come out with a couple videos a week, usually Mondays and Fridays. So hit the little bell notification too. You'll be notified whenever I put out a new video. So I'm both floating that this section now. I mean, when you wheelbarrow, and you got a wheelbarrow any distance at all it's not too fast when you first get started so i've been able to keep up with these guys you know magging straight edging bull floating as long as i don't have to do the puddling it makes it makes my job pretty easy and we'll just you know one wheelbarrow at a time basically spread the concrete out get it magged and get it leveled out now we're lucky right now this is pretty early in the morning this was like 6 30 in the morning we started so and it was a nice going to be a nice sunny hot day today but the sun's coming up behind the house so we are starting in the shade which is always a little bit of a bonus on a hot day now luke jumped in there to help me out just for a minute screeding the forming on this was pretty tricky so there was a lot of curves there was straight edges on the forms there was a bunch of curves and uh, the forming part of the, the video which which is uh, coming up at the end is pretty interesting so I, I'd recommend checking that out leaving a comment let me know if you do pools like this do you pour concrete and do a lot of pool decks in your area I get calls for a lot of them uh, so many that we can't even do them all so I, I have to kind of pick and choose because I have my regular contractors that hire me all the time to do concrete floors and slabs and stuff like that. And I can't really say no to them when they call because they give me a lot of work. And these pool decks are mostly just homeowners calling me. So I try to do as many as I can because we do like doing them and there is good money in them. You can make good money doing pool decks, but you can only do so many. I could, I could do pool decks, you know, multiple pool decks every week during the summer if I wanted to take all of them. You can see I'm getting that little section bull floated. That bull float too, is we got that bull float from Marshalltown. It's, uh, it's got the knuckle head on it, so when you 
when you spin the handles one way it tilts the front of the bull float up and then when you spin the handles the other way it tilts the back of the bull float up so you don't have to do as much bending over and it has those rounded edges on it too so it doesn't leave deep lines in the concrete when you're bull floating so we we re, you know we really like that bull float I'd, you can check that down, out down in the description those those uh, come-alongs, those rakes we're using too are down there. We get those from Marshalltown also. And you can see this is the second truck now. First truck was about six yards. Second truck's about six yards. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to get as much of that wide section done. And then we'll go back and get some concrete on that that small four foot section where we started so that concrete doesn't start to set up and dry too fast now if you notice me in the back there on the right I'm starting to get my finishing tools ready that's a that's a joiner or a groover whatever you guys call it we call it we usually call it a groover but I know a lot of other guys call it a joiner let me know what you guys call that thing so I'm getting I'm just getting some uh, the joints cut in as quick as we can just to start the finishing process and checking the concrete to see where it's at and you know what I noticed was oh I still probably got 20 30 minutes before I got to jump back here so we got plenty of time for me to go back and and continue helping the guys pour the concrete and get it in now you can see Darren just dumped a wheelbarrow over there on that that section where we started so we're going to start coming off that edge also Luke's over there helping me screed that wide part. That's about 14 feet wide right there. It's it's nice when both the loads dry fairly evenly. You know, you don't have one load that dries a lot faster than the other. It makes the finishing process go a little easier. Now, it's it's nice if the first truck dries a little faster than the second that gives you a little bit of time you know so you don't have to hurry to get on that second load but you do want them drying fairly consistently especially when you got enough people like we got today so we're getting down where the wheelbarrow is pretty pretty fast now with just one wheelbarrow so we don't need two guys wheeling with it just be getting in each other's way so Luke jumped back and he's helping me now you see he's magging that that four foot section out and then he'll have a little short screed he'll use and what I'm gonna do is since they got that under control I'm gonna go back and cut in some more joints just to try to stay ahead of the game here that's what makes it nice about having three really experienced finishers on a job you know if one guy has to go back you still got two to put the concrete in and if you got some laborers too that always helps so if this this is the summertime so you know I got Tia my daughter and Abby they're they're in college so they're helping but if this was in say May or September or October it would just be the three of us here so then we we'd really be hustling then to do this but again the temperatures might be a little cooler too so that would help slow the concrete down a bit now I'm using a 14 foot screed to cut those joints and also to keep that to keep that joiner or that groover nice and straight sometimes when you you can run those without the screed and then get them straight but sometimes if uh, sometimes they'll hit a rock you know there's three quarter inch stone in the in the mix so sometimes on those long runs using one of those they'll hit a rock and It'll kind of push it to the side just a little bit. Even a quarter to three-eighths of an inch will show if that if that groove is crooked. So I'm just using that 14-foot rod to make sure that it stays nice and straight. Nothing worse than having a joint like that that has a an S in it or, or a little crook in it or something like that. So now I got my Darby there. I'm going back and I'm checking the concrete, magging it, see if it's getting close to where it needs to be broom finished we're just going to broom finish this deck and I you know by magging it and feeling the the surface I figured out well I got a few more minutes before I got to go back and start brooming this thing so 
I'll get another joint cut in and just get ahead of the ball game that much quicker. The guys over there pouring, Darren and, and Luke, they're getting down to where they can almost get rid of that wheelbarrow now and just tailgate that. So as soon as Darren gets a couple more wheelbarrows in, he's going to get rid of it there. And now they can just tailgate that last little section. As soon as them guys get done pouring that, they're going to jump right back and start helping me. It's always good to stay ahead of the ball game on something like this. There's a lot of finishing to do. We got to do the joints like I'm doing. We got to mag the surface. We got to edge, run the edger up the edges to get the edge mark in. And then we got to broom finish it. So it's quite a process to finish pool decks. But as long, you know, if you know what you're doing and you understand the setting time of the concrete, then it's not too bad. Especially if it's still in the shade. If you notice, this thing's pretty much still in the shade other than where those guys are finishing up pouring. So if you can if you can get a lot of the, the pre-finishing stuff done like what I'm doing before the sun gets on it, then you're going to be in pretty good shape. Probably cutting those joints like what I'm doing takes the longest. You know, figuring out exactly where you want them to go, how you want them to look. Because on a curved pool like this, there's nothing really straight to go off from. So it's pretty much just, you know, putting them in at a certain distance apart. Putting them in on certain areas where you think it might be more likely to crack than another area. So that's what I'm doing based on my judgment, based on what I've done in the past. Is I'm just putting these grooves in. There, I, You know... There is a little rhyme to reason to what I'm doing, but it, it's a little bit random too at the same time, if, if you can kind of understand that, coming off all these curves. Now on the four foot section over there, that's pretty straightforward. You know, we'll try to go, since that section's four feet wide, we'll make our joints about every four to five feet. So, I mean, we can just put that first one in and then measure over a certain distance, whether it's four feet, whether it's five feet and then do that same thing around that one section there. So that section's pretty easy to figure out. Yeah, Luke's finishing up bull floating over there. So once we get once we get the three of us back finishing this thing, plus we'll have the two girls to do the edges, then we'll be able to move right along on this. You can see it's it's firm enough now. This this didn't take us all that long to pour. I mean, it probably took us about an hour and a half maybe since we had to wheelbarrow it and already that concrete set up enough so I can get on it and stop magging it so the 4000 psi even this early in the morning it's it's probably about 75 to 80 degrees out already it doesn't take very long to set up you can see I got I got another little hand groover there a hand joiner that we use for the finish mark when we go by these grooves to clean that joint up after I mag over it because when I mag over it and, and make sure it's nice and level it does fill in a little bit so you got to reopen it up and make sure the the groove line is really smooth that you don't have any rock holes in it or anything like that And what Darren's going to be able to do, Darren's, I don't need another guy on there magging with me. I can keep up with that. So Darren's going to start doing a little bit of the edging, and then he'll also run the broom across it here in a few minutes. You can see Luke over there in the back. He now has that joiner with the, the pole handle. He's going to finish cutting the joints in for me because we don't need him back yet to start finishing. So he'll do... He'll do that second truck. He'll get all the joints cut in on that. And then we can start finishing on that second truck. You can see the sun. The sun's coming around now, so it's hitting more of that second truck's coming up that four foot side. So the quicker we can get this this first truck or this first load finished, the better off we'll be on that part with the sun. Because once that sun starts hitting it, it warms up that surface. And that drives even faster over there. 
you can see Darren's got the broom now and he's going to just start putting that light broom finish on the surface we don't steel trowel our concrete here in Maine you know this pool is going to go through a lot of freeze and thaw cycles in the winter it will have a cover over I mean the pool part will have a cover over it but the concrete won't be all covered so it'll be exposed it'll have a sealer on it too but when what happens up here when because this has air entrainment in it and the air helps the con protect the concrete from freeze and thaw cycles the tiny little air bubbles in the concrete they allow the water to get absorbed into the concrete and then freeze and expand without popping the surface so when you have air entrainment in concrete like this and you mag it and then you steel trowel over it the steel trowel kind of seals up the surface and some of that air is escaping as we're finishing it you know as I'm magging it out magging the surface out some of that air entrainment is escaping as well as some of the moisture in the concrete is escaping out through the surface so if we steel trowel it that we take a chance on maybe sealing up the surface not allowing a little bit of that air or that moisture to escape and that causes a blister under it what that does is that blister area will just end up popping right off and peeling off at some point so that's why we only mag the surface the mag float doesn't seal the surface it keeps the surface open lets it breathe so we just make sure we mag float it really good if we think we have to go back and wait and mag float it a second time just to make the surface a little tighter then we'll do that but if we get on the concrete at just the right time and mag float it then we only usually have to mag float it once when we do broom finishes like this now, I know that's a little different than some of you other guys a lot of you other guys steel trowel in different parts of the country but here in Maine that's not normal you can see the girls now are doing the edges Luke's over there uh, doing the edges in the Sun and he's mag floating that part so we got a pretty good handle on this finishing wise everybody's got a job it's nice having five people on something like this versus just the three of us usually if you know if the two girls weren't here Darren would be doing the brooming he'd also be go back doing the edging and if he had to he'd jump in and do a little magging too but it's important once I mag the surface especially on a hot day like this you've only got a very short window of time to get that really nice broom finish on it before the surface starts drying up again if the surface starts drying up again then I gotta come back and go back over it and mag it up and you know work up the cream and the paste on it so the broom looks really nice so it's important that he stays caught up with me and having the two girls there doing the edges helps make that part a little bit easier see Luke's over there in the Sun now and he's already on that second truck it hasn't been very long since we poured that piece so you can that kind of gives you an idea how fast this is drying what's good about doing a pool deck like this early in the morning though we'll start at 6 30 we'll be all done this thing by you know 10 30 11 o'clock in the morning then we can go on and do another job today whether whether that's another small pour or forming up a slab or getting something ready for tomorrow these pool decks they dry pretty quick so it's not really an all-day type job on them and then a lot of times we'll come back we'll wait and come back the next day to strip the forms depending on how far away from home we are if we're over an hour away from home or the shop we might just wait an hour let the concrete set up a little more and then strip the forms the same day which is perfectly fine especially this time of year it's not going to damage the concrete at all and it just saves us a, a trip the next day you know a long trip the next day that's going to take you know basically if you include the travel time it's going to take half a day for a guy or two guys to come up and strip the forms you can see Darren's over there helping me broom and Abby's over there now helping Luke broom keep up with the brooming so now we got two people brooming coming around to where we stop pouring this thing now because of that retaining wall Darren couldn't reach way out there with that long handled broom because of the leverage he just didn't have a good enough leverage to reach out there 
And a little bit of the house was in the way too. He couldn't pull that broom straight back without the handles hitting the house. So I had to reach out there with a shorter handle and get part of that broom done for him. I got a I got a small 12 inch broom there with me that I'm using to go around the, the ladder area there because he won't be able to fit that broom in behind that ladder, that little section between the pool and the ladder. So I get all that broomed by hand and then he can just come by with a, with a two foot broom. He's using a two foot broom too instead of a three footer or a four footer with the long handles because it's just lighter. He can reach out there, you know, 12 feet with that thing and it doesn't hurt his back. I mean, we could have used a wider broom to make less passes, but with one guy reaching way out there, having to keep to see that, keep that thing way up in the air, the two footer is just so much lighter. It's actually even faster for one guy to do it with a two footer because he's not hurting his back. You can see Abby's over there. She's got a three footer because short handle, short distance. No problems there reaching out with that one on that short distance. So we're getting this finished up. You know, this is pretty typically how we pour and finish a concrete pool deck, whether it's a kidney shaped pool, whether it's a big rectangular shaped pool. The process is pretty, pretty much the same. Get the concrete poured in, leveled out as fast as you can, especially if it's in the sun. Then go back and start your finishing process and try to stay ahead of the game as much as you can. There's nothing worse than getting behind and having that concrete get hard on a pool deck. Um, it's, it's very difficult to make concrete that's hard look good with a broom finish. So That's it guys. Make sure you check out the part of the video where we're doing the forming. And thanks for watching. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed and we'll see you on the next one.